Hi, I'm Carl. In this video, we're going to be having a look at the final few questions, questions 48 to 50, section 3 of the Orange Booklet. So this is a question about using hypochloric acid and other methods to clean a swimming pool. Um, so we're given an equation here, which I've written out, and some atomic masses, which I've also written out. And question 48 says, as the hydrochloric acid that is formed when chlorine reacts with water is effectively completely ionized, what does that mean? So if it's going to be completely ionized, that means that it's going to be completely dissociated. Every um, molecule of hydrochloric acid that is formed is going to be ionized, meaning that its concentration must be very, very low. So the answer for 48 is going to be B. Um, if we were to rule out the other ones, A says its pKa value must be negative. Um, so of course, this pKa value is going to tell you a little bit about how the pH of its environment might affect its uh, dissociation. And so from what we've been told here, it doesn't really say very much about its pKa value. C says the pool water, water must have been basic initially. So we're not told about the acid reacting with the water. Um, and so we don't really know much again about the pH of the environment. D says it must be a weaker acid than hypochlorous acid. So a weak acid dissociates less. Um, than a strong acid. The strength of an acid is the amount by which it dissociates whenever it's put into a solution. And so it must be a stronger acid, in fact, than hypochlorous acid. Answer therefore is definitely going to be B for this one. 49 says a mass equivalent of 0.5 moles of calcium hypochlorite is completely uh, dissolved in a bucket containing 10 litres of water. And then that 10 litres of water is added to a swimming pool containing 20,000 litres of water and mixed thoroughly. What is the concentration of the hypochlorite ion in this swimming pool? Okay, so we've got, there, there's sort of two points I want to make about this question. The first is that we're talking about adding 10 litres of water into 20,000 litres of water in a swimming pool. How is that going to affect the concentration of the um, product in the swimming pool? An extra 10 litres of water isn't going to have a significant effect. The answers we're given here are one or two or 10 times each other um, so the, an extra 10 litres isn't really going to differentiate um, the different answers here. So we can actually just forget about that 10 litres of water and assume that 0.5 moles are being added into 20,000 litres of water straight away. The second thing I want to say is that um, we need to remember that calcium hypochlorite uh, has this equation. When it dissolves, um, you get your calcium ion plus two of these ions, which means for every one mole you have of this, you end up with two moles of this. We're actually starting off with 0.5 moles of this, so we end up with one whole mole of this, meaning that we've got one mole of um, those ions dissolved into 20,000 um, litres of water. So the concentration obviously is going to be the number of moles over the volume, so it's one over 20,000. Um, which is going to be um, 5 times 10 to the minus 5. Um, that gives us an answer then for 49 of B. And then finally, we've got 50. Oh. It says of the following, the greatest amount of hypochlorite ions per kilogram of chlorinating agent would be produced by what? Okay, so there's a couple of different ways you can attack this question. You could work out the number of um, hypochlorite ions that are going to be produced um, per mole and then find the one with the lowest MR, but we're actually given all the atomic masses here. So really, let's have a look at how many ions would be produced from the dissociation from each of these. So the first one, which is sodium hypochlorite, will produce one ion. If we look at Calcium, as we know, it'll produce two. Third is going to be nitrogen trichloride. And we're told that it completely hydrolyzes to form hypochlorous acid. And we're told this is going to be HOCl, which goes on to produce one ion. And then the last is going to be um, chlorine oxide, which again, goes through this sort of pathway to produce one ion. So of the following, the greatest amount per kilogram um, 
would be really a ratio between the number of ions produced and uh, the MR of them. So having a look at the different MRs, these have metal ions in them and they're very heavy. Um, and so that's going to reduce the amount um, you get. Another way to think about it is in terms of this kilogram of um, chlorinating agent. You're going to have the bit of it that's going to be producing these hypochlorite ions and the bit of it that's going to be the metal it's associated with. If the metal is very heavy, it's going to be taking out more of this kilogram, meaning you're going to get less of this chlorinating agent um, within that kilogram, if that makes sense. So we can rule out these because they have a very high MR due to the presence of um, their metal ions. So then we're left with C and D. Uh, so nitrogen trichloride and chlorine oxide, they both go on to produce um, their respective ions, but the ones with the lowest MR and the highest ratio of uh, ions produced per uh, sort of molecule per weight is going to be uh, C. So there we go. That gives us um, the answers to all of the, the questions in this paper. So that was questions 48 to 50. I hope that helped.